It's like the billionaire Warren Buffett says, the more you learn, the more you earn. You know what, Ty? The more I learn about you, the more depression I earn in my life. If you've been on YouTube as long as I have, I'm sure you already know who Ty Lopez is. He's solely responsible for selling more subscriptions to YouTube Premium than YouTube itself. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. It's fun to drive up here in the Hollywood Hills. The greatest advertiser of ad blocker in the history of mankind. He's the king of courses, and in my opinion, the greatest grifter to ever touch planet Earth. And he's here to suck every single penny out of your bank account and into his own. Sometimes you gulp a book, sometimes you deep throat it. <laughs> Let all that knowledge juice just guzzle inside you. So today we're going to be taking a deep dive into Ty Lopez, take a look at his past that he doesn't want you to know about, how he ultimately became rich by telling other people how to get rich, expose all of his crypto and NFT scams, and also talk about some of the positives of his message as well. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. Here in my garage, just bought this. Uh, new Lamborghini here. Fun to drive up here in the Hollywood Hills. If you've ever had the pleasure of watching one of Ty's videos or listening to him on a podcast, despite how much he loves talking about his past on a farm or living with the Amish, you'll notice he almost never talks about his past in the online dating scene. He'll always brag about the fact that he's been an entrepreneur since he was 19. I, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 19. I've been doing stuff and but more behind traditional business. But the only reason why he never mentions his past in online dating is because he used to scam people using these online dating websites and it eventually got so bad to the point where I'm guessing he had to leave the business as a whole. He even makes sure to not mention any of his confirmed past in the online dating scene on his LinkedIn account. You see, Ty used to own a company called Elite Global Dating LLC, and according to my source, which I'll leave a link to in the description, it's alleged that Ty's LLC used to use very similar templates and themes on all of these websites that were all directly associated with Ty Lopez as the owner. If we try and take a look at the reviews for all of these individual businesses, they are all either completely wiped from the face of the internet or flooded with one-star reviews. The scam here was essentially that he would allow people to make an account for free and then bot accounts would typically message the person shortly after they signed up saying something generic that could apply to absolutely anyone. But the trick was that they wouldn't let you actually see these messages until you signed up. And then after people would catch on to the fact that these sites were typically nothing but a scam, they would make it very difficult for the consumers to actually cancel their membership and sometimes even just continue charging them after they already canceled their membership. Then after one website had scammed enough people and they got too many complaints to the Better Business Bureau or on other websites exposing the site for being a scam, he would just move on to the next website using the exact same technique and a similar website layout. But obviously the new scam would have a clean slate and no reviews. Despite the fact that Ty's done his best to wipe the entire internet of his past as an online dating con man, here he is speaking at an online dating conference where he's recognized as the founder of datinghype.com. Obviously this site was most likely nothing but another scam, so the website was taken down and now the domain is for sale for only $4,000. Using the Wayback Machine, I was able to find the text they used to use on their website back in 2011 and Ty is explicitly recognized as the CEO of this company. This is part of the reason as to why I think Ty is a lying con man who genuinely loves to scam people. To the best of my knowledge, Ty Lopez was in the online dating business in 2008. Instead of constantly scamming people and shifting from website to website like the greedy pig that he is, he could have just founded a legitimate dating website that was actually good and useful and he literally would have been a billionaire today. Day. He could have been the owner of a company that's actually bigger than Tinder, which was founded four years after Ty got into the business, or maybe even Grindr. But Ty chose to scam people, and now he has to try his best to erase his past as a con artist. You can watch any podcast featuring Ty. He'll never talk about his past as an owner of dating websites. And the scamming and unethical behavior does not stop there. We are just getting started. You see, Ty loves to twist the truth and tries his best to make every possible narrative around him seem as squeaky clean as humanly possible. He even personally released 
two videos with the name Ty Lopez Exposed and Ty Lopez Scam so he can try and rank at the top when people search for these two things on YouTube. Which I'll give him credit for, it's actually pretty smart, but if there wasn't a scam involved with his name to begin with, I'm sure most people would actually like Ty. He's a charismatic and smart guy, I'd be the first person to admit that, but he chooses to be a liar and a con artist. Ty constantly lies about small things in an attempt to make more money. Recently someone was like, Ty, can I trust the guarantee? Simple, yes. There's never been a time somebody's want a refund that they haven't gotten their money. I did not create this program to get rich off you. Bruh. Ty, that is verifiably false. You do realize people can Google this, right? Or how about his TEDx talk, which is a great talk by the way, he's a fantastic public speaker, no denying that. But here he claims to read a book a day. But I've continued on that path, traveling, finding mentors, reading. I, guess, uh, I read a book a day. Obviously that's physically impossible, and even if it were truly possible, it sounds absolutely terrible. Or how about when he lies about how long he's going to leave a certain video up in an attempt to create an artificial deadline so he can sell you a course sooner. Pay attention. I'm not going to keep this video up for long. If you know me, I like to test lots of things. I Thanks for deleting that video, Ty. It's only been about 2,000 days. And to really solidify Ty's reputation as a liar, I think this video sums it up perfectly. Get a shot of this guy like peeking around the corner here. <laughs> You've got like 10 people like lurking around. Speedy. All my lawyers were what here are today. They doing here? All my lawyers were here. These are lawyers you have just standing around? Yeah. Well, and you're paying them hourly? Because we've been here for like two hours. Salary. Yes, Ethan Klein, back in the day, went to Ty Lopez's home, and instead of just having a normal conversation with the guy, Ty decided to instruct three of his lawyers to constantly stalk them around the house to make sure Ethan doesn't ask a question that could possibly damage Ty's incredible and impeccable reputation. So obviously this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to all of the lies that Ty has put out into the world, but now I want to get into exactly why I think Ty Lopez is a scammer and how he's deceived millions of desperate people around the world to line his pockets further. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here fun to drive up here in the Hollywood Hills if you had like three tips to give up me and my audience to like improving our life immediately what would it be all right three tips to improving your life um, number one most people don't know what they're talking about so don't listen to them only listen to qualified people, and most people aren't qualified. Ty Lopez is the greatest, greasiest, and slimiest coarse shilling grifter of all time. I've said this before, but there's nothing inherently wrong with selling a course. It all comes down to what's being taught, who's teaching it, how much it costs, and what the potential for a decent ROI is on what's being taught. And in my opinion, Ty's way of selling these courses is deeply unethical. The problem comes in when you're selling a course about stuff that you have no idea about in exchange for money. Like when he tried to sell a course on real estate investing, but proved to his entire audience on video in a debate that he doesn't know a single thing about real estate investing. I'm actually curious about your real estate chops, all right? So give me the formula for a cap rate. Can you define what a cap rate is? So real, let's talk about real estate for a second. Let's two well, no, 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 no. Define the formula of a cap rate. Do you know what a cap rate is? Absolutely. Cap rate is, is it? it's like ROI in the stock market. Wrong. They call it no, cap rate. It's no, it, it's very similar. Actual. In case you don't know what a cap rate is, that's totally fine. But you're most likely not selling other people on the idea of giving you money so you can teach them about real estate investing. To put into perspective how stupid this is, not knowing what a cap rate is and selling a course on real estate investing would be the equivalent of dressing like this. and then selling a course on how to pick up girls. There is a foundational issue here that needs to be addressed prior to you selling a course on this topic. There is something wrong with selling a course and then intentionally being as vague as humanly possible in that course with the information that you provide and use that paid course as a stepping stool to upsell the desperate people that have already paid you into buying a newer and more expensive course from you. 
Look at this advertisement he used to use for people who had already enrolled in his 67 Steps program. He claims in writing that if you refuse this offer, you're permanently locked out and blacklisted from the mini MBA program for life, which is just ridiculous. If you had clicked no thanks on this, the price would immediately just drop $100, and if you still refused that incredible offer, I have a feeling he'd still gladly sell you the course later down the line. On that note, as I showed you before, Ty uses a lot of completely artificial deadlines as a high pressure sales tactic to get people to think less and sign up for his courses earlier. I was on one of his course sign up pages and I waited until the countdown went down to zero, I reset the page, and the timer just resets. The online training is pre-recorded, it's not live. It does not start at any specific time. It only starts when you give Ty your personal information so he can bombard you with advertisements for the rest of your life. So I've counted how many times that he actually emailed me over 1300 times. Oh! 1300 time in the last two years it would be physically impossible for ty to be an expert on all of the things that he has sold a course on over the years for example in 2017 this moron was trying to sell courses on crypto day trading which as we'll get into later is terribly ironic given his track record in crypto and as of today a lot of ty's current arsenal of courses do not even disclose any sort of pricing information to you directly. You have to give him your full name and email address in order to even look at the prices of these courses. I wonder what he's hiding. And the courses he does give the pricing information out for are nothing but courses that cost less than $20 where he's just using that as a tool to upsell you into a more expensive course. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. This is exactly, I don't mean to sound like Cat Williams, 1300 times in the last two years, but this is exactly what I've been waiting for. Ty's only defense for people who call him a scammer is essentially just saying this trash. Look around you, your whole life's a scam. Everything's a scam, your job's a scam. <laughs> education's a scam. Yeah, Ty, I appreciate you letting us know that our entire lives are nothing but a scam. Coming from a scammer, of course, I think everything to do with you is a scam. And Ty, as a very self-aware man, is willing to make such a disgusting broad generalization and lie on video about such a thing only because it benefits him. If Ty had simply been a legitimate businessman from day one, as we discussed before, there is a 0% chance he would ever regurgitate such garbage out of his mouth. There will literally be a day where Ty is done losing all possible credibility to the entire human race and he'll just start selling a course on how to sell courses. If he hasn't done it already, I would be willing to bet a thousand dollars with anyone watching this video that one day that course will exist. And that one might actually be worth buying because like I said, he's in my opinion the best to ever do it. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here, fun to drive up here in the Hollywood Hills. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Be connected! After Ty's coarse shilling grift started to dry up a little bit, he very predictably decided to jump into the crypto grift. I promoted BitConnect. <laughs> Got he. Yet again proving that Ty is literally an AI that was spawned into the planet with the sole intention of sucking as much money out of the general public and into his pockets. So if you guys aren't aware, in 2020, Ty bought the company Radio Shack. If you guys don't remember Radio Shack, basically they used to sell a lot of electronics back in the day, but ironically, the company ended up going bankrupt in 2015 because they essentially weren't able to adapt to the new world of online sales. Ty had the genius galaxy brain idea to purchase this brand for pennies on the dollar and decided to turn it into a crypto exchange platform. What? Ty's strategy to bring relevance back to the brand was essentially to make these really cringy tweets in an attempt to go viral. Hey Mutar, do you remember when I dug these nuts up your mouth? Hi, now that we finally got your attention, wanna DM us? We've got some AA batteries for your vibrator you pussy. Crying emoji, crying emoji, laughing and crying emoji, laughing and crying emoji. 
Oh, guys, look at how edgy Radio Shack is nowadays. Sick. Knowledge. Now I'll definitely consent to allowing them to rob me of all my life savings. In typical Ty Lopez con artistry fashion, their token is now down about 98% since its release, which, by the way, was only about eight months ago. So if you had invested 10,000 USD into Radio Shack's cryptocurrency less than a year ago, you'd have about $200 today. Damn, that's crazy. Despite falsely claiming that the shack is back in writing, thank the lord they've stopped tweeting as of November 2022 after the project was done robbing everyone out of their money. And according to this screenshot, even just sending messages in their Discord and Telegram is no longer even allowed. And Ty's track record when it comes to cryptocurrencies does not stop there. We are just getting started here. In November of 2021, Ty created what he himself referred to as a logical and energy efficient alternative to Bitcoin called Atlas USV. USV meaning universal store of value, of course. They wrote this blog post where they claimed they would be playing 3D chess while everyone else is playing 2D. Their white paper is obviously as complicated and convoluted as humanly possible. They claim that their overarching strategy is the Nash Equilibrium token defense system, which is just horrific and in typical Ty Lopez fashion, he makes sure to name drop Elon Musk. On the front page of the Atlas USV website, they used to advertise in writing that USV rewards token holders for staking at over 150% per year. Obviously this was deleted from their website and is now nowhere to be found, but given the fact that they're playing 3D chess while everyone else in the crypto space is playing 2D chess, I had to put Atlas USV to the test and do some further research using tokensniffer.com, which is essentially an automated audit. And well, would you look at that, zero out of 100. Okay, well, maybe this site is wrong. After all, they are utilizing their Nash Equilibrium token defense system. Well, god damn, Ty, down about 99% from the all-time high? Well, how can that be? I thought we were playing 3D chess here. I thought this was supposed to be a universal store of value. What happened to our 150% token staking system, Ty? But wait, there's more. NFTs represent uniqueness right, and unique access. In addition to releasing two useless altcoins that are now down about 99%, Ty also released an NFT project called the Original Garage Social Club. In my NFT project, I got three levels, silver card, gold card, and the rare, ultra rare black cards. Oh my God, wow. He made countless claims like a certain tier of his NFT holders would get to have dinner with him. So you're gonna change your social circle, over dinner, new group, expand your mind, all while we're eating good food, the best food in the world. One of them was that if you bought his $50,000 NFT, you would get the opportunity to play him in basketball for $10,000. Or, my personal favorite, for 42 ETH, you're blessed with the opportunity to shadow Ty at his office. And of course, how can we forget the one-on-one -on -one ball shaving experience with Ty? Don't you just love how these NFT people consistently prove that NFTs are worthless by adding artificial bonus perks if you buy one of them? I mean, just think of how insane you would have to be to pay more than $20,000 to watch a movie with Ty Lopez, of all people, on this earth. He also claimed that if you buy a certain silver edition of his NFT, you will get access to an NFT members only hotel, restaurant, and club. That is by far, not even close, the dumbest NFT benefit I have ever heard. An NFT hotel works so much better. So let me just give you an example. No, Ty, don't even bother giving us an example. Let's just think about this for one second. This guy is going to build or buy a hotel, a restaurant, and a club just for people who own this NFT? 
Why? Where are these things going to be located? When do they open? How are all three of these businesses going to maintain profitability if the only possible customers they could ever have are people who bought into this scam? What if they live in a different country? Hypothetically, even if he did actually build these businesses, imagine two years down the line going to a nightclub with only Ty Lopez NFT owners. There would be zero women there. Maybe one. And I'm not only saying that because only men buy NFTs, I'm saying that because there would only be two or three people there in total. It would just be a few nerds who haven't showered in weeks asking, yo bro, did you see that new Bored Ape Reddit Alpha Charlie Brown collab? Dude, check out my new crypto zoo egg, it just hatched into this shark gwyn, dude. Like, come on Ty, how could you have possibly ever thought that this could be a good idea? It was never possible for this to work, yet he still went on and lied in writing about something that he would never do. This should be illegal. I even reached out to Ty personally to see if he had any updates on these fraudulent businesses he claimed would be opening up. Unfortunately, he did not respond because there's nothing for him to really even say. He lied his way to stealing more than a million dollars from the general public with this project. And if we take a look at this project from the consumer's perspective, it's not doing so well. Obviously, the lies don't stop there. This is just the tip of the iceberg with this project, but I think you get the point by now. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. Fun to drive up here in the Hollywood Hills. Look, I see major benefits in Ty's general message and some of his advice. He's in great shape. He's a great public speaker. He's charismatic and smart, and he's now objectively successful and rich, and he's one of the best internet marketers of all time. But he's also a lying con man as I've just shown you. But one thing I will say about him that's a huge positive is that Ty has recommended great books in the past and Ty's probably inspired millions across the world to pick up a helpful book and read it. But despite the fact that Ty has inspired millions to read, Ty himself doesn't even read books. He skims them. But sometimes books only have one or two things that are worth reading. In fact, most books only have that. So I, I have flipped through the pages one time. I like to go through three times. First time I read the table of contents at the back. The second time, go a little faster. The third time, I just focus on one chapter. And if you're reading a good quality self-help book, for example, Think and Grow Rich, I could tell you in one sentence the entire point of the book. But for you to actually benefit from the knowledge in this book, you need to actually read Napoleon Hill's words from front to back. And guess what? You can get all of the original versions of Ty's repurposed information that he sells for money in those same types of books that he recommends. Ty is nothing but an unnecessary middleman who sells courses on anything that's popular at the time while unironically trashing college for being an unnecessary middleman. But I'll tell you what I think is closer to a scam, getting people to put in $47,000 a year when they don't even know what they want to study. Why not cut out the middleman? What he won't ever tell you is that if you simply have a library card and a connection to the internet, you could gain the knowledge to be able to better your life without spending every penny you have on some disproportionately overpriced course that he refuses to even disclose the price of. What Ty Lopez won't tell you is that a majority of his income is from people who are easily manipulated and are desperate, who think that they there is some magic secret to success. So yeah, Ty's repurposed information that he sells can absolutely help you. He basically used that information to become the man that he once pretended to be. But that's just what I think. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. If you guys liked watching this video about Ty Lopez, I think you might like this one about me, Kevin, or maybe this one on the screen right now. Aside from that, I hope you all have a great day.